In this video, we're going to look at the directory information tree or directory trees because we're going to relate that back to WAS, the Web Sphere Application Server, and and more specifically to the way it handles multiple uh, multiple directories, which we're going to talk about. So, if you recall, in an earlier video, we looked at this diagram, which is essentially just a directory information tree. A directory information tree is a representation of a directory and a directory member remember is like active directory or there's uh, the secure directory server so SDS from IBM and there's also e directory from Novell now all of those a directory is just a listing of what are called objects everything in the tree here is an object you have the in this tree, by the way, is an inverted tree. So you have the root at the top, and the root goes by various names. It's called the root, it's called the base, it's called the suffix. And you don't explicitly mention this when you're kind of navigating through the tree. What do I mean by navigating through the tree? Well, in order, this is sort of like a map, and you need to get to certain pieces, places in that tree, in that map. And the way you do that is by mentioning using two components. The first one is called an RDN, which is a relative distinguished name. And all that means is an entry here in the tree, a single entry. This one is an RDN. This one is an RDN. This is an RDN. This is an RDN. This is an RDN. But when you string these together, you can specifically identify an individual location in that tree. And those are called distinguished names. So distinguished names are composed of RDNs. And you read this from right to left, where the right is the topmost branch of the tree. And these are actually called objects. So everything in the tree, yeah, every, every sort of entry here is called an object. So you can see C equals US here. And then we go O equals IBM. There it is. O is IBM. And then people is OU. So OU equals people. And then each of these are attributes. So each of the values contained in that object or contained in that RDN uh, are attributes. And you can have multiple attributes at a given uh, level, at a given RDN, at a given object in the tree. And I should point out that each entry is referred to as an object, like I mentioned, but at a structural level, there are two types of objects. There are containers and non-containers. Non-container objects are known as leaf nodes. One or more containers branch off into hierarchical fashion from a root container. Each container may contain leaf nodes or other containers. So what does that mean? Well, it means that this RDN contains another, or this object contains another object, and so it's not a leaf. This object contains three objects and none of and none of them except for this one this uh, contain other objects in other words this is a leaf because there are no further branching there's no further branching uh, con happening here or here but there is here so this is a leaf this is a leaf and this is a container just like this is a container and this is a container and here's an example of why on earth you'd even want to use a directory information tree or a directory in general if you are running a large organization, and even really some small organizations, you're certainly going to have many computers and you're going to have many users. So how do you organize all of them and keep track of where they are and who they are and when was the last time they logged in and that sort of thing? And a directory information, a directory can take care of all of that and it's represented by that directory information tree that we've been looking at. This program that we're running is called Active Directory Users and Computers. It's from Microsoft and it's showing you a Microsoft directory called Active Directory. And you can see already the hierarchical nature of the directory and how the this application shows you that information. So this is kind of like the root and then you can go into these uh, lower you can go into a container and then see the leaves, which is really what we're doing here by users. And you can create additional containers by going to, for example, new, and you can create an, uh, an organizational unit. It, you actually uh, can't do it directly on some of these special ones like users, but you could go here and go to new organizational unit, and then you'd be creating a container. And then from there, you could you know grab a person and move them into that container. And again, this should look familiar because essentially that represents this directory information tree. Now you can also do this 
in a command prompt. And sometimes that's useful, especially if you have trouble or don't have access to a graphical user interface for some reason. You can do this both in Active Directory, which I'm not showing here, this, uh, but you could do through LDIFDE and the equivalent in Linux, which is what you would use if you are if you have IBM SDS or the Secure Directory Server, is called LDAP Search, or it's fairly similar in any case. And what you do is you open up LDAP Search, or you run LDAP Search, and then you ask for verbase, verbose output, that's the dash V. Two Vs don't make any difference, we'll just, one is fine. And then you ask for... Uh, you give it the name of the computer, so that's what dash H is, it's the host, and that's just a shortcut cut because ours is actually data.ibm.com, and that of course has to be resolved through DNS, but you then connect to port 389, and then you give it a D slash D. Now this should be familiar because this is the DN, so if you read this from right to left, you're basically saying instead of .com, you're .us, and then IBM, and then ICFM, and then this is the leaf, right? Because it's the far, it's at the farthest left, and that's CF admin. So that's the name of the administrator account, and then you give it a dash W, which is the password for the account, and then you essentially say, I want now to mention a base. A base is really important. You're saying that I want my search, because remember this is an LDAP search command. We want to give it a base from which to search or where you are searching in, and you're saying I want you to that base to be this, and the last argument is what is it exactly that you want to search for? And you're saying, well, I want to look for all UIDs that exist. So this wildcard is just saying, of star here, this is the wildcard, saying give me all of the UIDs that are listed in that base. And it's going to run that command. And the output should look something like this. So what you're seeing here is each entry at the different level, that, at that sub, at that base that we provided. It's giving you a list of everyone who matches where you have a UID listed somewhere. So here's a UID, and here's a UID, and then here's a UID, and there you go. Now if you wanted to limit that and say, well I want the UID to be RTS user 1, now you're going to have a single match, and there you go. And you'll also notice that there are some things that repeat quite a bit, right? Because between all of these. You have, for example, object class repeats over and over again. So this is called multi-valued because you, by entering object class you have more than one entry. So you're seeing it's it's this, it's also this, it's also this, and it's also this. So these are, the, on the left are called attributes and on the right are called values. So th these have, uh, as I said, they are repeating. So right, each this entry here, this leaf, this object, has multiple object classes and if you notice there is a kind of repetition here organizational person is listed over and over again in each of these object classes so you could if you wanted to go here and instead of doing a UID you could filter this list and say well just show me everybody who has an object class that's equal to organizational person and you should get a list and there you do of 15 separate matches and actually, this is very important because this is the kind of thing that when you are configuring WAS and trying to troubleshoot it, the software is running similar sorts of queries against the database to find your users and then use them for authentication and for authorization purposes.